Hello everyone, welcome back to Wrestle. A huge game today. We're back to Saturday football. Uh, just before we get into today's game, the reason why I haven't posted a lot of Saturday games uh, was because I haven't really been getting a lot of appointments. So the last match I posted on my channel uh, was around October time. Uh, that game I refereed September 30th. My next middle uh, from then was in February. Reason being was there's so many referees, level fours, level fives, wanting games and not enough games. So I wasn't really getting appointments. And when I did get appointed as a referee to a game, the game would get postponed due to a waterlogged pitch. Uh, so then my next game as a referee was in February. So I had to wait five months before I actually got to referee a game on the combined counties. Uh, so just before we get into today's game, I'm just going to quickly run through the games that I did ref and my scores as well. So I'm going to post the scores on the screen. I'm also going to post the league table so you can see the standings of the teams I refereed at the time. Uh, so I'm just going to get on my phone and go on to Moas, which is where all the appointments are. And then uh, I'll run through all the games I've done. Yeah, so just on Moas, so I refereed September 30th. Then my next game was October 7th. That was assistant referee. Uh, game after that, November 18th, that was assistant referee. Then my next game after that was February the 10th. Uh, that was as a referee. Uh, so that was FC Deportivo Galicia versus Brookhouse. Uh, again, I'll post the tables. Then I'm also going to post my scores. Uh, so Deportivo, as you can see, they scored me a massive 85. Uh, great score. The score at the time was 2-2. Uh, and then also Brookhouse, they scored me a big 80. So two big scores there. So that game went really well. Next game was London Colney versus Yately, uh, March the 16th. So again, another month before an appointment. I can already tell you what London Colney scored me before uh, I even referee the game. It's going to be 70 just because they always score 70. So they scored 70. And then Yately, who I believe at the time and still now are fighting for a playoff spot, they scored me 74.75. Um, quite good on judgment of major decisions. The game was 0-0 and I gave a penalty in the 98th minute to Yately. Blatant handball, there were no complaints. Uh, so 98th minute penalty, they went on to win 1-0. General decision making. You can see it here. Um, everything is expected or above. So that was London Colney versus Yately. Uh, my next game was a week later, March the 23rd. Huge game. British Airways versus Amersham Town. Put the table at the time here. As you can see, first versus second. Amersham were trying to win the league at the time. A few points off here. And uh, British Airways were trying to secure their playoff spot. So let's actually look at the club marks now. First versus second. Let's see what both teams scored us. The British Airways manager actually watches the videos. He told me after the game on the day. I did recall that game, uh, but cameraman turned up late, missed two goals, missed a penalty shout, and he also missed Hailstone drama. So it was 1-0 to British Airways at the time. Uh, Amersham took a goal kick, then Hailstone started falling very lightly. And then all of a sudden, it just got super heavy where you could feel it hitting your skin. Uh, so I was like, oh, I'll wait for the ball to go out of play and then I'll stop it for a few minutes. Lo and behold, Amersham went and scored an equaliser, stopped it for a few minutes and then Hellstone stopped. So I did have that recorded, but cameraman missed everything. Uh, so the British Airways report, 81.5, huge score for a huge game. Uh, that's a great score to be fair in a big game. And the Amersham score, let's quickly take a look at that one. They scored me 80.75, so two big scores in a huge game. So first versus second, like I said, and I've done really well, as you can see by the scores. Today's game, April 13th, Rising Ballers versus Eversley. I'll put the league table here. As you can see, they're both fighting for a playoff spot. Eversley are seven points ahead of Rising Ballers, uh, but Rising Ballers have a game in hand, and they're playing today. So if they win, and they win the game in hand, they'll be one point behind with about three or four games left. So it's a huge game today, another big appointment. Uh, the ground has changed as well. So Rising Ballers normally play at North Greenford grass pitch. When it rains, it becomes an awful pitch. So they've changed to Beaconsfield pitch, done some research. It's a big Astro pitch, so it should suit both teams if they want to play football. Going to be a great game. Can't wait for it. Also, stick around to the end of the video. I'm going to post the club reports and talk through them. So you have to wait 10 days uh, for a club report, hence why. This video will be coming out, not the Sunday after, Sunday after. So I think the 28th of uh, April. So yeah, stick around. I'll show you the pre-match run up to the game. Then, as always, we'll uh, talk about all the decisions. Hope you enjoy this big game and let me know what you think about all the decisions down in the comment section below. So uh, just making my way to the ground now, uh, saying about an hour and 34 minutes. I'm going to get there about quarter to two. I told my assistant's the latest, uh, two o'clock. Uh, so a bit of time to spare which is always good 
Uh, just gonna go petrol station, put petrol, get my favorite thing to eat, which my uh, cameraman hates me eating for breakfast or for lunch, but I'll show you when we get there. Um, so yeah, Rising Ballers versus Eversley today, huge game for the running for the playoffs. Uh, playoffs is second to fifth, so those four teams that fill that spot will go into playoff. Obviously, second place fifth, third place fourth, winner goes into the final, winner of that goes to uh, step five football. Huge game today. Uh, if Rising Ballers win, there'll be four points behind Eversley with a game in hand. So as you can tell, it's very close between um, them. Sorry, I was just changing gear. Between them, Molesy and Eversley. Um, I think the other two spots are kind of secured between British Airways and Berks County. They're kind of ahead and the Amersham have won the league. So yeah, gonna be a very close game. Uh, the ground actually changed. So it was supposed to be at North Greenford where um, Rising Ballers normally play at home. But for anyone that knows that pitch, I used to play there for St. Pantillamon for two years. Great pitch in the summer, but when it rains, it is awful. It cuts up super muddy or it just gets waterlogged so easily. So no surprises that they changed the pitch. It's actually on an Astro pitch, which I think suits Rising Ballers because they're a good footballing team. They want to play football. No idea about Eversley. Um, haven't seen them play yet. Obviously, I know they're a good team because they're in for playoff contention. So yeah, just go ahead to petrol station and then uh, we'll go to the ground. Plenty of time or 10 minutes to spare. And uh, yeah, looking forward to this one. Watching the time go up on ways, listening to the football. Currently Newcastle just kicked off against Tottenham and just driving along. I've still got an hour and 17 minutes, so I got stuck in a bit of traffic. So time went up by about five, six minutes. But uh, we're getting there. Newcastle v Tottenham should be interesting. I've kind of got it up on TNT Sports, but I don't watch it. I like listening to it uh, through the audio in the car. Uh, but yeah, get to be relaxed. So I still have a stop off at the petrol station. Next stop, petrol station. Then the next stop is going to be the ground. Petrol stop is done, uh, 25 pound petrol put in. This is literally like normal Saturday routine. Also, I'm quite hungry, so I got myself a sandwich. And my favorite thing in the world, grenade bars. <laughs> my cameraman hates it when I just eat this for lunch. So the other week when I ref the Olympia versus NLA and then went straight to the Highgate Kamazi game, hadn't eaten. Uh, all I had was that banana for breakfast and instead of getting a sandwich and stuff I literally just bought a grenade bar and ate that so that's all I had from like the morning up until about three four o'clock but yeah little sandwich grenade bar I'll have one before the game and then I'll probably have one at half time because teams provide food after the match uh, so that should keep me going and then I'll go home later and eat as well but yeah okay next stop now is uh, Beaconsfield Town football ground 58 minutes away so we're getting there currently at 10 to 2 and then I'll show you the pitch changing rooms and hopefully I can recall um, like what happens when managers bring in the team sheets and stuff if not then we'll be jumping straight into the game Did I like to work? Oh, maybe I pressed the wrong one It's a nice changing room, quite spacious, very spacious. One of my officials is already here. Oh, they've got a uh, one for a lady official as well. Shower, toilet. All right, let's head out and quickly check the pitch as well. This is great. Whatever it is, next level up. Let's get right into today's game. Rising Ball is to kick us off first. Make sure you stay until the end of the game to see the club reports as well. I hope you enjoy this match. I'm just going to show you how the temperature of the game was for the first 20 or so minutes. Uh, I gave three fouls. This was one of them into the back of the home team player. Uh, again, a similar foul in the defensive third of the home team player. So that's 2018 minutes. And then our third and final foul uh, in the 22nd minute in the back of an uh, Eversley player. So this was how the game was so far. Yeah, 
So our first actual challenge of the game, you can see the Eversy player just about gets his foot to the ball before being fouled by the rising ballers player. Uh, let me know if you would have given a booking for that challenge. I didn't. Uh, so let me know if you would have given a yellow card. Potential penalty shout for Eversley, uh, so you can see here they're attacking. I'm in a really good position in terms of closeness, uh, angle-wise I'm not. So as you can see here, 23 crosses it, definitely hits the 12's arm. He's definitely in the box. You can see here I'm quite close. I didn't have an angle on it. So when the 12 turned his back, all I could see was his back. I wasn't too sure what part of the body it had hit. Uh, so if I gave a penalty, I would have been guessing. I needed to be more to the right or more to the left to have seen properly where it had hit. Uh, would you be given a penalty for that? And as we can see here, as we speed it up, definitely a yellow card uh, pulling his opponent. Uh, so someone actually mentioned that I should start putting in the caution codes. So I'll start putting them in. This will go down C1 SP, uh, pushing or pulling an opponent. Uh, this was pulling. So C1 SP, our first booking of the game. Another thing that the Rising Ballers manager uh, said to me, you see there that I'm pointing towards my side. Apparently the ball hit his hand, uh, which I'm not debating whether it did or not. It looked very close to his body, but even if it wasn't a handball, it was, I shouldn't be shouting where the ball was hit. Just shout play on, continue, so there's no confusion. So I'm going to talk through this one. This is one of the few decisions me and the Rising Ballers manager spoke about after the game. A nice chat, ate our pizza, spoke about a decision. Uh, so the number four here, you see he's fouled there. He's already been booked. Uh, rising baller players asking the question, told them to move away. I've called in the captain straight away. The manager wanted a second yellow here. Uh, I didn't believe it was a bookable offence. We're going to take another look at it after. So you see here, I uh, brought in uh, the captain and that player. Second foul of the game. Obviously the first one you saw he got booked for, for pulling the opponent. Called in the captains. Do you think that's another bookable offence? Again, I think it's just a careless challenge, in my opinion. I think the manager wanted a second booking for uh, reckless or tripping the opponent. Let's take one more look at it. Do you think this is a bookable offence? Looking back at it, again, I don't think it's a second caution, uh, but let me know what you think. And that's the half-time whistle. We're going to the half, uh, one all. Interesting half because not really a lot was going on. A lot of soft fouls, I'd say, given. Uh, which war fouls, but a potential two key match incidents. So um, the handball for Eversley was it a handball, which means it would have been a penalty. And then the second booking for the Eversley number four. Do you think it was a second yellow card? Let me know. Let's jump straight into the second half where there's a lot of handball drama and a last minute penalty call. Also stick around to the full time whistle so you can see the club reports and what both uh, managers said.
our second caution of the game, the rising ballers player was certainly got the ball, but for me, the full team pushed it to the left instead of the 22. Our freeze frame in there, you can see the 14 who's in the blue has his foot underneath the ball. The 22 is actually above the ball, uh, which I thought on the day and caught the player on the shin. Uh, so that's our second yellow card of the game and he's been booked for C1, a reckless play. It was a reckless challenge for me uh, and it's a free kick to Eversley. So two handball shouts within the space of three seconds. So this is the first one. Player goes to flick it. I think misses it. Hits the four on the shoulder. I don't think that's a handball. And then this one here definitely hits this player's hand. But his hand is so close to his body. Almost next to it. Um, definitely not a penalty for me. Let me know if you're giving a penalty for either one of those. Now the handball shot you just saw, that is the other incident me and the Rising Ballers manager spoke about after the game. Uh, so it's a foul here on the Rising Ballers player. If you just watch the manager, he's on the dugout there. You can see him pointed to his arm there, suggesting that it was a handball and a penalty. So we're going to take another look at that one. So let's take another look back at the handball shot. Again, it's from a Rising Ballers corner. Uh, they win the header. So we're going to zoom in here. You can see the defender kicks the ball onto his own arm. I've grabbed something from IFAB, which is the laws of the game. Let's have a read of it. So the question asked was, if a player heads or kicks the ball and it then hits their own arm, is it handball? This is not a handball unless the ball goes directly into the opponent's goal or the player scores immediately afterwards, in which case a direct free kick is awarded to the other team. You can see here, let's take another look at it. He kicks it onto his own arm. It's not going in towards the goal either. It's going more past the goal. For me, this is not a penalty. Let me know what you think. <laughs> penalty to ever see the last minute of the 90. Um, Rising Ball is asking me to speak to the assistant. I had a great view of this. We'll slow it down here and zoom in. You see there the striker gets to the ball first and the keeper takes him out. Keeper's argument was where was the ball going? Regardless, striker's got to the ball first. The keeper's caught the player. It's a penalty to Eversley. Uh, I also did speak to my assistant just to confirm there wasn't a dive involved in that scenario. So you'll see here now I'm speaking to him. He's confirmed it with me. So it's a penalty to Eversley, the last minute of the 90. The only thing I'm disappointed about is the booking. More careless, if anything. Not reckless for me, not dog so for me because of where the player is going. Uh, so disappointed in that, more careless, if anything. But that will go down as a C1 FT foul tackle. So it's 2-2 and the rising ballers argument was, um, not really argument, we had a discussion about this after the game, very calm discussion. Look who scored, the number four. They think he should have been sent off for that challenge, the careless challenge I think, in the first half. So let me know again if you think he should have been sent off. So you can see there, deliberate handball by the Eversea player. Rising ballers want to play it quick. They need to win this game uh, to give themselves a better chance of a playoff spot. So I go and let them play it quick. I'm going to come back to this player and book him for a C1 HB, which is handball. But look what happens next. Another handball shout in the penalty box. So we're going to go take a look at that. But first, I'm booking that player for deliberate handball. Like I said, C1 HB, which is a handball. Uh, so our fourth booking of the game. Let's take a look at the penalty shout now. Here we go. Is this a penalty? So the 20 passes it to the 22, takes a shot. And no, it hits the number three on the chest. Definitely not a penalty. Just a corner to rising ballers. And that's the full time whistle. The game ends 2-2. A big point for Eversley. It benefits them more. Let's take a look at the match report. So we start off with Eversley first. They scored the difficulty of the game. Difficult. 
and then the rest of their marks was between expected and good all down there total mark 75 that's fine not bad and then we'll go to the rising ballers report so you can see here they scored the difficulty of the game average judgment of major decisions poor that's the decisions uh should that player have been second yellow carded again i don't think so but let me know your thoughts on that and also the penalty shout uh, they think they should have had a penalty when the player kicks the ball onto his own arm. Uh, general decision making between poor and expected. Uh, match control expected. Communication expected. Um, fitness was good. Never had a problem with fitness. And general control and player management was expected. So the score was 68.5. If you look at the section 5 comment section, uh, the person who does the report put disappointing performance from Dimitri. Well below his usual standard. Much better than this. Didn't have the courage to make big decisions so that's regarding uh, the second yellow card again i don't think it was a yellow card and also um the penalty where the player kicks the ball onto his own arm would you have given a second yellow would you have given a penalty let me know your thoughts on the decisions below like i said after the game me and the rising ballers manager had a good chat about the decisions uh, so he watches the videos as well so he'll see it back and let me know what you just thought about the whole match in general huge playoff game uh, I enjoy these Saturday games, they're so competitive. Hope you enjoyed this one and we'll see you next week uh, on another episode of Wrestle World.